in an acorn box, I'll do a three by three, five inch long for the acorn portion. For the lid, I use a piece of walnut and typically about three and a half square and the thickness as long as I can make it cap we're thick enough. So I just mark centers That'll give me a good center point so it spins fairly balanced. Start with my acorn portion. Always make sure it clears before you turn it on. Touch or start any gouge. Start, start over again for this portion. For this portion, since we're in spindle orientation, we can use a spindle roughing gouge or any other gouge you're comfortable with. All you want to do is get it rounded. And a quick check just to see if it'll bounce. That little bounce tells me I'm not round. I got one little flat spot. So we just rounded the rest of it. Now we're around. We'll want to okay. The closer you get this to the same diameter, the better fit you'll have. Here we are. So the hollow, I started at the center. And all I'm doing is giving myself an edge that I can start the bevel on so it doesn't skip out. If you have a Jacobs chuck and Forstner bit, you can do this much quicker. But 
I consider that cheating. So I use the gouges to go in. Tool for doing this is a rounded scraper. If you come in just above center and drop it down, you can hollow that way. I'm hollowing this I go in at about 30 degree angle to the side that gives me the slope of the acorn I still have to shape the outside but I leave it thick for the vibration as I'm trying to scrape it that far Start again. once I'm in that far I'll use a half round to let me get the bottom shape of an acorn. It's a little thinner tool, so I have to come up higher on my tool rest. Last chance to sand the inside. I double the paper, then bring it over. I find that if I have three thicknesses, it's my temperature gauge. If my fingers are getting hot, I'm going too fast or pushing too hard. Now, if you don't like putting your fingers in there, I make a little sanding stick. And I can do this sand again. I started with a hundred grit. Then I go to one at fifty. And I round the edges so I don't have a sharp point or edge when the people are taking the lid off. Depending on the wood, I might go to 220, 330. With this one, it feels pretty good at 150, so I'm done. Again. I use a mineral oil beeswax finish, 
So I just mineral oil a rag, turning it on. Buff it in. And I take beeswax and burnish it. And find my dry rag and just burn the wax till it melts. This is my dollar fifty depth gauge. I just took a yardstick, cut it at eighteen, put a hole in the other half, and then I can slide that in and out. I got two inches, so I'll come out of here, move it to two and a quarter, and draw the bottom. Then quarter inch the whole way down. bouncing that tells me there's something wrong with the wood if I look there's a knot right there that's what I'm hearing you can hear the, hear the difference and feel the difference after you do this one Check and make sure you're following the contour. That's pretty good. Back to my 100. And for outside, I reverse it. Stand the fibers up the other way and it'll actually stand smoother. I would do 150. And reverse. I just go ahead and finish it. Then we put this aside for a minute. There's the almost finished acorn portion. The reason we leave it on here is I wanted to texture the cap. To do that, I'll make a tight friction fit. Friction fit. <laughs> and then I can texture while it's spinning on the base. Now, with the lid portion, I'm now in faceplate orientation. Never stick the spindle rough and gouge on this. It'll snap, break it off, 
and throw pieces at you. I heard that somewhere. <laughs> I've just roughed the outside round and put my tenon on. I'll flip it around and this will be my stem of the acorn cap. Okay. Since I have the stab center marks, I hold that up, get a rough idea where I want to go. This is for the inside. Yes. That also gives me an idea how thick I'm making my cap before I start to hollow. Again, tighten both holes or all four if you got them. Another round nose scraper. I'm going to chamfer an edge and just give me a place to rub the base and make sure it will fit. Okay, now I just barely fitted it in there. I'll hold it. And it gives me that burnish mark, so I'll get a very good fit. And, hold on, okay, start again. To fit, if, make my fit, I'll use a bedan. It just gives me a real straight, perfect edge. Go ahead.
and that's the perfect fit for what we're going to do next. Now, I round this to give it the cap shape. I just sanded it enough to take any rough edge out. If you sand it too much, your fit goes away. And last chance to finish while it's here. I don't wax my fit portion, it would change your fit. Wagner texturing tool. It puts all the neat design in a cap. Hold, hold it still. Show us the neural. It's just knurled and spins. The way it works best is at 600 RPM with the tool rest back and you come in under and just hold it. I played with all speeds and 600 is what gives me the best texture. If you watch, you can see when the wood fills the neural. Now I'll turn my speed back up. And I'll finish the outside. start again okay now we're ready to finish the cap portion got a really good fit so it'll stay on And I bring up the tool rest just for a little added protection.
you can sand at this point if you've got really rough edges. It's not necessary because we're going to texture the whole thing. But there's some tear out on the end grain, so I'll just rough that down. I like to oil it now, and then when I texture, it pushes the oil into the grain. And again, 600. Give myself about three inches from the cab. If you don't keep moving the toolbar, you'll get a weird angle and it puts a strange pattern in. start again there's our finished acorn cap textured oiled and ready to go when I burnish that it puts a little mark on the hair so I just lightly sand that off Now I can go back up to speed and finish the bottom off. done. I found a way to sand this. Go ahead. You just reverse it and expand the chuck into it. Gently. Very gently. You're only a quarter, quarter inch at the most. 
and I hold on to it because it's barely in there. My last chance to make sure the oil's everywhere it needs to be. So once I've got that, burnish the beeswax. Don't forget to tighten the chuck. Wipe off your sawdust. And one acorn box.